So, uh, most of you know me, but uh, I do believe some people will watch that film and perhaps they, they are not aware uh, who am I and uh, does, um, haven't heard about a Somerset Diverse Community. So my name is Michał Puzinski and I'm BAME Community Engagement Officer working for Community Council for Somerset, where we run projects called uh, Somerset Diverse Communities. And our role is to support uh, black, Asian and ethnic minority groups uh, in Somerset and, ho and um, hoping that they uh, develop in right direction and they achieve their goals. And um, uh, today we decided uh, to, to, to organize a, a webinar um, about um, job market because of, we are aware that uh, the job market could be very competitive, uh, especially for those who struggle with the confidence of uh, English language skills or, or self-esteem. And uh, from our experience, uh, we know that there are, there are hundreds of people uh, very well qualified who are stuck uh, in, the, in the workplace uh, and they, they, that they don't like or where they um, don't have an opportunity to use their full potential, uh, which can cause to um, lead to, to uh, frustration and um, may affecting um, their life, the, the quality of their life. And, and therefore we decided to organize a webinar about opportunities and challenges uh, for black, Asian uh, and minority ethnic uh, communities in the labor market. Um, our guest speaker uh, um, will share the experience and knowledge uh, um, to, 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 to help you build self-confidence uh, and plan uh, your career. So after the presentation of, every, um, of each person, of each guest, there's going to be a space and time for uh, questions. So um, by any means, if you would like to find out something else or, or clarify, or you've got additional questions, uh, you are more than welcome to ask them. If you don't feel very confident in asking those questions directly, uh, please use chat um, and uh, I will uh, ask them on behalf of you. Um, so I'm going on chat also, uh, you can find uh, contact details to, to myself and also you can find our website and uh, Facebook profile. So if you would like to be updated about the future webinars or future initiatives and projects, uh, please make sure that you join our, our profile or you, you can you visit our website. Um, so, um, please let me to introduce the guest speakers. Um, uh, so, Joanna, Joanna Boguńska, uh, she's an, um, an active uh, member of Polish community in Yeovil, uh, and uh, Joanna, Joanna also provides ESOL classes uh, for a number, number of years and uh, tries to motivate other people um, within, within her community to learn English. Um, and I do believe Joanna is going to uh, talk about the importance of English language. Um, our next speaker is uh, Naomi uh, Lowux. I hope uh, my pronunciation wasn't so bad. Uh, and uh, Naomi is an experienced uh, recruitment consultant with the knowledge of range sectors, uh, industrial and office based. Uh, I am Naomi, I used to work in, in the UK, but also in the Netherlands. And I do believe at the moment Naomi is also abroad. Um, and uh, due to the experience that she gained, uh, she's aware about those uh, challenges that people from other countries may face. And so hopefully she will uh, talk uh, about what recruitment agencies are looking for from you and how you can make yourself uh, stand out in a competitive market. Um, our uh, third guest is Melanie Gregory. Uh, Melanie is from National Career Service um, and uh, hopefully Melanie will share her and knowledge about um, how to plan your career and um, she will tell us a little bit about the importance of motivation, resilience and self-confidence. Um, so I don't want to I don't want to waste anyone's time so uh, Joanna if you could uh, just start. Yes of course uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all I want you to, uh, to thank you Michal for inviting me and welcome everyone. I'm going to use some notes because that's my first webinar, to be honest, and I'm a bit uh, stressed. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to tell you about my story. 
and how I came to England. And then I'm going to talk about a little bit about belief system. Um, we're going to set some goals and I'm going to tell you about resources available. Um, so, and obviously you've got my uh, name, so if you need anything, um, even you've got some questions, please uh, do ask. Uh, so just about my story. So I came to the UK in, from Poland in 2006 with perfect German knowledge, 100 pounds in my pocket. And obviously German wasn't a skill that I could use back then in a job market. Um, and I needed a job quickly, obviously, because of my funds. Um, and as a master of economics, um, the only job I could apply for was in a meat factory. You can imagine only that it wasn't really um, a lovely job um, to do. Of, um, on my first day there, um, I realized that I have to find a better job. Uh, not only for money, but also for my uh, well-being, for my mental health. Um, nobody was taking into account my qualifications because of lack of uh, English. And I knew to be a valuable candidate for a job, I have to speak fluently, obviously writing, listening, speaking, that all came to, to one. Uh, so I studied grammar every day and wrote for a course and practice with native speakers, which is, uh, we're well, lucky in England, obviously, uh, it's easy because you can speak to your neighbors. Uh, so quickly I found out what's, uh, what the meaning of how are you is and what's the weather like. Um, I, could, I couldn't really use it um, and have a conversation at work because most of the workforce was, uh, it, it was all Polish, back then it, in 2006. So it took me two years uh, to apply for account manager position in recruitment agency. And I'm very proud of that. Uh, this experience opened my eyes and I'm really glad that we have here uh, uh, experienced people in the recruitment, um, in the recruitment uh, market as well. Uh, so I, yeah, from this job, I found out how the job market uh, works. Uh, so seven years ago, I started three businesses. I'm an English teacher, insurance advisor, and I had an office uh, to help people with their uh, everyday problems like taxes, benefits. And I still learn English. I keep studying it. I'm aware of my uh, flaws about my accent is different and that my, I make mistakes. Um, but now it doesn't stop me from doing what I do, what, with doing what I love about my hobbies. It doesn't stop me. And, um, and I think that's the, that's the best uh, way to do it. Even uh, be aware of your mistakes and hopefully somebody can point it out, uh, but do it anyway. And before I say more, I would like uh, everybody who would like to improve their English to take a piece of uh, paper and pen and um, just honestly answer uh, those questions. First of all, why do you want to know English language? Why? It's a very important question. Why do you want to know English language? Or why do you want to know it in a, on a higher level? Is it to socialize, to integrate, uh, to find a job or change current job, to open your own business maybe, or to help your children with, your home, with their homework? Um, why is a very important question because that's going to give us the drive. It's going to give us a motive for action. And next question, next question. So first one is why? And second question is, what is stopping you? What limiting beliefs do you have about yourself that is stopping you? Uh, a, example, mine was, I don't have a talent for English. <laughs> it was funny because uh, I could speak fluent German. It means that I could learn a language if I want to. So uh, I fall in love with English. That's why I've, uh, it was easy for me. Um, but why, what, what do you think, what is stopping you? 
And do you have maybe that you don't have a time? That's a common one, common excuse. I know that you know, probably uh, nobody wants to hear that, but I don't believe in that. Uh, if you want to do something, you're gonna find a time. So when we've got uh, those answers, why and what is stopping you, now we can plan uh, your actions. So I always say to my students to, like, to take a piece of paper and pen and actually plan your action, your learning journey. So we're gonna create first, what we're gonna do is create the time for learning. And uh, uh, having a tutor is helpful because I uh, monitor uh, progress, and students can ask me some questions that they, they cannot find answer anywhere else. Uh, but it, it's not like a must. Uh, but what is a must is, first of all, stop yourself when your mind is telling you, I can't do it. Uh, I've, uh, I practice that, you know, when my mind is saying, oh, I can't do it, it's too difficult. I say, stop, thank you very much for sharing and I'm gonna do it somehow, I'm gonna find a way, and I really encourage you to do that. Um, very good tip is to ask a friend. Ask a friend who you believe can speak better than you. Ask them what they did in their learning journey, what actually they've used, what methods they use to learn, because there are hundreds of methods, there is no magic pill, there is no magic pill because everybody thinks that I'm going to go to sleep with some amazing device and I'm going to learn English that way. And I don't believe in that. I believe in the working uh, towards your progress. So working every day. Uh, when you live in England, it's really easy to surround yourself with English and set a goal with a date. At, I would say, for example, by the 1st of January 2021, I'm going to read or listen to 10 audiobooks in English. And then obviously you have to monitor and stick to the plan. It can be simple as that, but you have to surround yourself with English. So for example, you can uh, watch news, read books, um, do so social media, even um, settings on your phone do it all in English, you can watch movies or YouTube channels and that's all, all um, a lot of resources are free and the most important thing is uh, you have to enjoy the process and um, like I said I loved the journey and I loved what I did and um, so um, find a way to enjoy it and no stress allowed because stress is not going to help uh, us in the journey so that's all from me i hope that i inspired some some of you to just um learn some more english and thank you very much for listening that's great jan i've got a question because i would like to uh, challenge you a little bit yes I, uh, I do believe that some some people may say okay so but what, what's the point to learn the language if uh you know, I'm a, a Polish person uh, and I'm living in the Polish neighborhood. I'm working in the factory where my colleagues speak Polish. Uh, I watch Polish news and I attend Polish uh, church. Uh, so I, I feel quite uh, com uh, comfortable and I don't feel uh, there's a need. Uh, could you just uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about the additional value of knowing a, a second language? Yes, I would say, I would say uh, the answer is actually Think about where you are at the moment. Think about the place and even for the respect for the place, I would say that, and I'm strict with it. Sorry about that. My, as a teacher, I'm always say, you are in England. So please, I know you're surrounded by what you know, but please go out of your comfort zone, integrate, and you'll see how your brain improves how many possibilities, more possibilities you have. Even in a job market, uh, I always say you can earn more money if you can speak English. And, but I, I don't think that um, I need to tell everyone about importance of English, because if they even in once, they will experience that somebody else with English, they work similar, they work hard, 
both hard workers, but one of them can speak better English, they will get better money or job opportunity. And finally, they can do what they enjoy rather than what they have to do. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I do believe that there's another uh, additional value and another benefit from knowing the language, uh, the second language, um, if, when we live abroad. It's not only about uh, the employment, uh, or, but also um, the, the, the friendships that, that we can make because if, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's got a huge um, impact on our well-being and mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and have you noticed that, for example, we can be ourselves? For example, I'm now, I am like, like I am in English and in Polish. I don't change. People who know me know me like that. But when somebody struggles with English, they have a mask on. They, for example, they're very outgoing person in their own native language, but when they switch to English, they are shy. And people think, oh, she's shy. No, she is not. He is not shy. She just cannot express their feelings. They cannot even uh, stick for themselves, like to, um, in a situation, in dangerous situation, you know, they cannot say anything because they don't know how to say it. Yes, definitely. We are more um, limited by than when we when we operate on the only the language that we know, and then we ask for for uh, constant support from people who knows the, mm. the, the language. Uh, and um, uh, definitely, that's great. Thank you, thank you, Yana. No so, thank you. My pleasure. I'm not sure it was brilliant. I'm not sure whether anyone would like to ask any additional question, uh, you are more than welcome to do that right now or on chat, uh, or you can email um, myself uh, later on after the webinar. And the, if you've got an additional question to your Jana about potential tech techniques, methods, and how to um, maintain the motivation, I do believe that Jana doesn't mind to be contacted and let and give you a few tips and hints uh, how to learn English every single day. That's great, thank you. Uh, so now I would like to ask Naomi to talk about her experience and knowledge about um, the, the, the labor market and what the recruitment agencies are looking for, what kind of qualifications uh, are, it's good to, to have. And also perhaps she could uh, tell us about her experience um, uh, of working abroad. Naomi? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mikael. Um, right, I really appreciate, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I really appreciate being invited along to have a chat with everybody. Um, as Mikhail said, I have worked abroad. Um, I'm English, but I've worked in France, I've worked in Holland, and totally agree with everything Johanna said. Um, it is hard. The struggles of living in a foreign country are real, and that, as Johanna said, if you struggle with the language then it um then it makes everything harder your self-esteem goes through the floor you find you can only do very basic jobs and you you just feel rubbish and it, it, it's very hard and i think that experience has enabled me as a recruiter to empathize with people coming into my agency who are looking for new roles and a lot of the time, as yourself and Yana said, you a lot of people come from different countries and end up doing jobs which they wouldn't normally do. You know, people with degrees and masters and PhDs are working in meat factories or cheese factories and are getting very down. So my advice would be to follow Joanna's advice. L language is vital. You need to learn the language. If you come into any agency and you can just about say yes and no, they might not even give you a job in a factory because they say it against health and safety, they might say it's dangerous, you don't understand. So even just a basic knowledge of English will help you get a job, okay? And once you've got that basic language, work on it, keep working on it, absorb English as much as you can, a lot of the time in factories you are surrounded by people who are speaking the, your own language which doesn't help um, so 
watch English TV, magazines, books, um, audio books, anything to increase um, your, your English. That's important. Um, and make sure your uh, CV is in English. Um, there's, it's no point having one in, in your own language, have it in English, have it checked by somebody who is fluent in, in English to make sure it is correct. Um, don't just rely on Google Translate because we all know that is not always the best. You can get things quite wrong on Google Translate. Um, know the format of English CVs. Um, Polish CVs, French CVs, Dutch CVs all have a different format. So it's making sure you go on, it on um, Indeed or CV Library and you will see examples of CVs, CV formats. We, in England, we generally don't have photos on our CVs. So things like that, will, uh, taking those off will help. Um, visit different agencies, the agencies that have got jobs that you're interested in. There are lots of jobs that do industrial work. If you want to get out of industrial work, don't keep going to those agencies because they will keep trying to put you in warehouse roles. Go to ones specializing commercial positions, office, admin. Even if it's just a basic office role, that's a good start. It's a really good start. So go to lots of agencies, visit them, um, talk to them on a regular basis. Have they got any updates? A lot of the time, the jobs that they have got, um, will they'll, they'll know about them before they advertise them. So keep in contact. Be the person that you think, oh, Naomi's been looking for a job. She calls every single week. Let's get her a job and stop her calling me. Um, we, honestly, we, it works. <laughs> um, um, and make sure if you have an appointment with the agency, you turn up on time. Uh, reliability is vital. If, if an agency feels they can't rely on you to turn up on time, to go to work on time, do your shifts, then they will stop using you because there's plenty of other competition out there who agencies will use, unfortunately. Um, and be prepared to stretch outside of the job they give you. It could be they give you a transport clerk role, but stretch, say, oh, I can help in the reception. I can help in a different area and be prepared to 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 offer your services because that company will keep stretching you be good for you you build more skills and um, you also build their their trusting in you and could offer you a permanent position um, make sure you've got um, transport if you can a lot of the time um, you know works can be anywhere particularly in somerset um, the public transport system is not fantastic um, equally where I live as well so it's good to have your own car if you can I know that can be expensive but if you can get your own car that's really helpful um, don't expect to be able to go with your friends um, that people we have coming into agencies you say well I want to work with my two other friends and that's not going to help if you want to do step outside of warehouse work you need to be prepared to be brave and it is scary but it will work um, and make sure you've got everything in order you've got your national insurance number you've got your passport everything with you when you visit an agency have your CV nicely presented um, we yeah same as in most countries if you present yourself well smart then people will see your perspective of what you could be and what you are and and that's what um, agencies um, are looking for someone who they can think right they look really professional. They're, they're too good to be working in the meat factory or the cheese factory. Let's, let's get them somewhere else. But the most important thing is work on your English, 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 English. Don't surround yourself with um, Polish or your own community. Try and step away from that. And um, yeah, I think those are the, the key things that I can think of. Thank you. That's great. I I, um, I found it quite interesting that you've mentioned about CV and uh, uh, own transport, especially in Somerset. We are living in quite rural um, environment, so 
if you live in London, it's much easier to, to, yeah. to you know, use the um, public transport to get anywhere. So perhaps uh, it's even more difficult to drive in London uh, than use a bus. Uh, and uh, definitely, I must say that I've met, I've noticed a lot of people who uh, ha haven't possess a car and are quite limited to one s a small town, and, and then then they complain. But a, a, a car, a own transport, and the same as a language uh, it's extending you your possibilities because you are more um, uh, you are you've got more connections you you, you can reach um, uh, different distances so that's quite important um, and the, the CV as well I do remember uh, that I, I, I'm aware that different cultures uh, perceive CV in different way and so as, as you mentioned in, in the UK usually we don't attach um, a, a picture of ourselves so it's good to uh, to make sure that we understand what is required from us what's the the, the proper uh, format of, of, of CV and um, I do believe some people I must say may feel too proud to learn about CV because it seems oh it's straightforward it's just a uh, I'm just summarized with where, where, what, what schools did I attend and where did I work and that's it but, but it might be there's always a space for the improvement so um, yeah. I, I would like to mention to, to people that there's a lot of uh, free online trainings about how to write um, CV in English uh, and as you mentioned it's always good to um, seek the, the second opinion of a native speaker who can look at the paper it would take them uh, two minutes and they will can, they could just uh, let you know uh, what should be done uh, what, how it should be translated in a better uh, more formal perhaps way yeah uh, I'd, also, I'd also say Mikhail that with the CV often if people have been in the UK for a while they might have done lots of different warehouse roles with a week here with one agency a week with another agency on their CV I would suggest that people start off with a profile and then list their skills and their experience like the skills you might have developed in Poland in your home country which highlight how good you are you might be excellent MS office office manager management those sort of skills make sure those are listed so people see that before they're drawn down to the to the different jobs because um, focus let them see how good you are how much potential you have that you've got this brain that is incredible and and that you can do all different sorts of jobs that you have potential um, and also with the when you list jobs if you've done lots of different jobs in warehouses um, which a lot of people do it might be worth bracketing them under one role say from 2015 to 2020 various warehouse roles rather than listing every single one of them um, obviously you'll need to give all that information when you get references but for your CV so it doesn't look quite so scary to agencies and to employee employers bracket it under one grouping that's my I think that's really important right thank you and i would like to take the advantage of um you know, letting you know about uh, the project that somerset diverse communities runs these days it's called language somerset language connect all details you will find on our website and facebook profile but also i will i will paste uh, the information on chat um so for those people who perhaps they are not with us right now and they would like to learn english uh, a practical uh, english with native speakers speakers it's free of charge um, if you would like to learn the language we are going to match you with native speaker and you can practice your English uh, in informal uh, way uh, which is really good but also that information is for those who perhaps uh, have a, a little bit more time and they are native speaker and they would like to support uh, BAME communities who who, who uh, would like to improve these, their language skills there's also an opportunity for you we can find a person for you and the, the way how you teach and the way how you learn is um, we are using different platforms usually it's a whatsapp so we do recommend to have one up to three sessions per week uh, up to 20 minutes each and you can talk about your hobbies interests whatever you would like to uh, it's more about um, making th those people more confident in using the language um, anyway thank you Naomi for your time um, 
and now I would like to ask Melanie uh, from Na National Career Service uh, to talk about those uh, important factors that some, sometimes we uh, forget to, um, to uh, look after, uh, like uh, self-confidence, motivation, and uh, how, to, how to think in advance about our um, development in general. Melanie? Hello everybody, uh, can you all hear me nice and clear? Right. Super. Okay, uh, well thank you Naomi and uh, Joanna, thank you also Michael for inviting us today. Um, I do apologise, I'm probably going to repeat quite a bit what uh, Joanna and, and Naomi have said already, um, and what they've said is really, really good advice, and a lot of it um, I find within my day-to-day -day job as a careers advisor, when I meet people um, who have come to the UK, saying exactly what they've said so please do take on board what they've said because it's really valuable advice um my presentation will be a bit more formal i've got slides very exciting so hopefully this won't go horribly wrong um and i may ask you guys a few questions as well um for your feedback so if you want to um add anything in chat when i ask you a question please do otherwise it could be a little bit awkward okay so i'm i'm gonna share my screen with you oh hang on oh uh, Mikhail, you've disabled my um, screen sharing. Give me a second, Melanie. Okay. Uh, if you can just, um, uh, I will do that in the meantime. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, There's me thinking I'm all organised today. <laughs> okay, can you can you try right now? Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Right, okay, so can you all see my screen? Yes. Excellent, okay. So, um, obviously I'm from the National Career Service. I'm gonna to talk to you about resilience and skills and it will link into a lot of things that uh, Naomi and Joanna mentioned before. Um, I'm gonna go through about the National Career Service, um, talking about resilience and skills and how to kind of put that on your um, applica application stage. Um, have any of you heard of the National Career Service? Yes. Okay. Can you see me? So, could you all see me? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So, um, it's a free service and you can all access it. Um, and we can help with a whole lot of things uh, to, uh, with regards to careers, finding jobs, career planning, um, doing courses, etc. There's four ways to access us. Uh, you can access us via our website, um, uh, and I'll give you the, the uh, web address for that in a minute. Uh, and there's lots of really, really useful tools on there you can use. Um, so there's information about writing um, CVs, going for interviews, uh, finding a course. Um, if you're wondering what can you do, you don't know what you're um, able to do, there's skills assessment that can give you uh, career ideas. Um, and there's also a lot of information uh, about job profiles. So if you're applying for a job, you don't actually know what the job is, you can go on there and uh, type in the job name and find out a bit more about it. Um, you also on our website, there's web chat. So you can talk to uh, a careers advisor via web chat. Um, so for some people that might be their preferred way if they're a bit anxious about chatting to people. Um, you can also chat to people on the phone. Um, and you can have uh, some sort of basic careers advice that way. Um, the way that I work as a careers advisor, I normally do face-to-face -face, uh, career sessions, um, but uh, with COVID-19, everything's done over the phone at the moment, but actually I'm finding that really works really, really well. Um, I have come across some people whose uh, English isn't um, particularly great when I've done this, uh, but quite often they'll have a friend uh, come and help them and they'll do the translating down the phone. Um, so it kind of uh, highlights uh, Joanna's comments about being able to speak English and speak English well because it will help you. Um, we can help, as I said, face-to-face uh, -face with your career progression, kind of ideas about how to, um, to, to go forward, uh, getting experience. Um, we talk about transferable skills, so things that you can do in one job that you might need for another. We can help you identify those um, and help you put them onto your CV. Um, as Naomi said, you know, mentioning your skills is really important on your CV. Um, a lot of what I do is actually CV creation. 
Um, and I do see a lot of uh, CVs from people overseas. There's nothing wrong with them, but, but the layout is very, very different from the UK. Um, so going on the National Career Service website or things like Indeed or Read or any of those job search sites for, um, I think even Microsoft have standard uh, CV layouts are worth going to have a look in there. But we can actually help you create that CV um, and we can read through it and critique it. And I think the, the biggest thing I noticed about CVs from people um, outside the UK is, is that they really don't sell themselves. Um, it, it just basically says, you know, I worked here, I worked here, I worked here, but it doesn't say, well, I'm brilliant at this, I'm fantastic at that. Um, and I know that's not something that we're all used to do, telling everybody how wonderful we are, but you need to put that on your CV because other people are putting that on their CVs and employers are looking for that. So if you want to uh, get in contact with the National Free Career Services, it's free. There is no charge for you. Um, you can either go on our website um, and use our resources there, um, or you can give us a phone call on the National Career Service um, telephone number, uh, and they can put you in touch with an advisor um, and have an appointment with them. Or if you, if you think I look quite friendly, you'd have to have a chat with me, you can contact me directly, and there's my, um, my email address. So I think the first thing, especially uh, for, uh, for people looking for work, resilience is a really important thing. Um, it's something that's banded around. People say, oh, you need to be more resilient. And it's like, well, what is it? You know, can someone explain to me? And well, I think the first, the fact that if you've come from another country to uh, live and work in the UK, it shows that you've got a lot of resilience. The massive change that you are feeling, getting out there, go and find work, eat, as, as Joanna said, doing stuff that you don't actually want to do just to pay the bills, um, shows a huge amount of um, resilience. You'll just kind of get on, you want to uh, earn money. Um, Resilience is something that can be learned. Um, it's not the easiest thing, uh, but you can learn it. So, um, what really is it about workplace? Why is it important? Well, for everyone, even if you've been born in the UK, there are no more jobs for life. Um, you will change jobs within your company, you'll change jobs uh, from company to company, and each time you have to make change, and that's when you need to have resilience uh, to make sure that it's working for you. Um, employers need employees to be resilient, um, because at the moment the work pay uh, practices are, are fast moving, with things like internet um, has changed, and also massively for all of us with COVID-19, we're all having to learn rapidly how to use Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, Go Meet, you know, all these things I've never used in my entire life until this, these last few months. Um, so we've had to really change adapt really quickly. And, and likewise, even if you're a stay at home mum, you suddenly become stay at home mum slash teacher and you're having to learn new skills all the time. So, you know, we're all constantly learning to be resilient. I think we're a lot more resilient than we think we are. Um, we also, um, at work, people who are resilient are better able to deal with change. Um, so, you know, you need to, in, in, in dealing with workload, and sometimes, so, you know, for some people, again, for example, of COVID-19, some people are sat there twiddling thumbs, doing nothing, and then other people, their workload goes constant, 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 whoop, as they kind of deal with things. So it's, again, being able to kind of deal with those kind of changes in, in the workload and, and not kind of feel overwhelmed um, and, and uh, by it all and to keep on coping. Um, some people think, oh, some people are just naturally resilient. Um, I think they possibly are, but I think it is something that is learned um, and it's more about how you approach life um, and, and take on board things and not let things get you down. So, resilience, characteristics of resilient people. This is, I'm going to ask you guys some questions here. So uh, in the chat, can you tell me what, what you think, to, what does resilience mean to you? What's a characteristic of resilience? Is it the chat? Where's the chat? Uh, okay, I can't see the chat on here. Here we go, this is my resilience going now. <laughs> um, grids. Okay, where is it? No, I can't see the chat participants no hang on chat there we go i found it right okay um 
not easy to phase. Yeah, yeah, not easy to phase. Yeah, just kind of getting on with things. Thank you, that Ginny. Anybody else got any ideas of what resilience might mean or what kind of characteristics you need? Yep, yeah, adaptability, change, flexible mind. Yeah, that's a brilliant one. Anyone else? Okay, right. Well, uh, this is kind of what I think. Uh, so you just basically need to believe in yourself. Um, I think that's a really important aspect of um, being resilient um, and know your worth. You know, guys, if you've gone got a degree in your in your home country, then you are worth exactly that. You know, you have the the uh, ability to reason, you have the ability to think, report, analyze, etc. So believe in yourself. Um, for some people, it might be hard to forgive um, and having a positive um, mental attitude as well. Um, and I think, you know, that is definitely something that we've all had to learn um, over the last few months. Um, and it could just be making sure that you um, are getting good exercise, good sleep, um, you know, reading, being social with people um, and, and also sort of having people that you can go to. So don't feel you're an island and you got you can't ask anybody, but most people are happy to help out. Um, and I think also, as Johanna said, it's continually learning um, and developing these experiences. So developing your English, uh, but it's not just the English, it's the colloquialism. So I have quite a few uh, friends from other countries um, and we have some very odd phrases in the UK that constantly um, uh, amuse them uh, so don't be afraid to ask questions about what that might mean okay so i'm going to move on to employability skills uh, okay so i can't see you guys at the moment so um employability skills are a whole load of things um, that employers are looking for um, when you kind of go for interview uh, when you uh, put your application form in um, or um, when you're sort of doing your work as well um, and these are things that uh, are not just for one type of job they're kind of within all types of jobs you know whether you're in a factory um, or you're doing a very very high flying job all of those things there um, are needed uh, at some sort of level um, so teamwork customer awareness, problem solving, uh, being able to read, write and talk properly, communication, um, using IT, so computers, most things are computerized these days, um, just being very positive, can do, that you'll help out. Um, I think Naomi mentioned about, you know, if you're, if you're doing a factory job, see if you can help out on different areas, on reception, um, it, it does go an awful long way. Um, you know, being on time, um, meeting your deadlines, uh, you, know, be, you know, all those kind of things are really important. Um, and if you're not too sure what your employability skills, because that's not like a standard list, it's not exhaustive. There are so many things that you will have, um, such as maybe particular IT packages, um, uh, maybe counselling that you can have a look at. You can have a look on the National Career Service uh, job profiles. So I'm going to show you uh, an example of that. Okay, so let's see. Just checking. Can you can you all still see me? Yeah. Okay. Hang on, I've gone too far. Uh, last read. Sorry, guys. So um, the National Career Service website um, have all these job profiles on there. So if you go. Um, uh, and sort of go on the job profile so it's under explore careers um, I just found a random one from marketing manager and they're really kind of useful to kind of give you an idea about that working in that job um, within the UK so it kind of gives you the name it gives you alternative names it kind of gives you the um, the kind of salary you'd be looking the kind of hours you'd be expecting um, and as you scroll down it talks about uh, how to get into that type of work uh, professional organizations you might want to contact within the UK um, but also it lists all your skills and knowledge you need for that job um, and these are all kind of things that you can kind of check that you have and if you haven't then you can kind of work on um, but also you can kind of almost steal that um, that list there and put it into your CV and um, I will say that if you do do that you need to check the grammar on it because it's it's not quite how 
I would did this or I did that. You need to kind of change it to that. But these kind of things you can start with your um, in your CV. So employers are looking for three things. Um, again, I think Naomi alluded to this earlier, um, is they're looking for your capability, um, you know, your commitment, your attitude towards work and your compatibility. So whether you would fit in with the company and its culture. Um, you can develop your employability skills, um, which I think is really important. I think volunteering is a fantastic way um, to fill your uh, skills gap. So if you are doing a job in a factory which is well below your skills, um, then maybe doing volunteering is a really great way to kind of show that you can do this in the UK. Um, you know, there's lots of uh, websites you can go on. Uh, one really good one's called Do It, and you can even do the um, the volunteering from home. Um, you can ask companies for work experience. Um, some larger companies are more than happy to accommodate that. Um, and again, again, Joanna and Naomi said that you know, getting involved, you know, joining groups, improving your English, improving um, the understanding sort of the English colloquialisms. Um, and also keep an examples of when you use skills because that's really useful because often when you go for uh, job interviews, you can go a bit blank uh, and, and not remember just the amazing things you've done. Um, so keep records of when you've done things uh, that are remarkable. Um, job fairs are really, really worthwhile um, attending. Um, most of the job fairs at the moment are online. Uh, there's quite a few. Uh, the National Career Service one uh, is actually doing one on Monday the 20th. I think it's about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, but when COVID-19 allows people to go out, I'd definitely go and recommend going to a couple, talk to local employers, see what they're looking for, um, you know, even take your CV and hand it in there, or even have it on um, your phone and just ping it off to them. Um, because you can find out more about the local jobs market and what people are looking for, and you can then learn to adapt to that. Um, and definitely continue learning. Um, Free webinars like this are brilliant. Um, you can learn about uh, new skills. There's lots of free online courses. So at the moment, the National Career Service have had load, loads of uh, free courses to boost your skills, whether it's kind of learning to do social media online for business, coding, um, better use of IT, um, bookkeeping. There's loads of free courses on there. And also, if you decide you want to um, come to help have help from the National Career Service, uh, we can put you in touch with free courses that can give you UK qualifications as well if you're um, uh, on benefits in the UK. Um, and it also shows to employers that you are really keen, you're ready to learn, ready to work, and you'd be a great asset to them. So I think, as I said before, and a lot of the CVs that I see um, that come through to me, that people just don't sell themselves. Um, it's very, very basic information, but in the UK CVs, we're looking for a lot more information about what you can do. So be confident. Um, believe you are the right person for the job. Show that confidence that way. Do highlight your skills and experience. You know, um, show... Um, areas of really good achievements that you've done, whether it's in the UK um, or at home, or whether it's done in your private life, maybe volunteering. Um, and remember, if you don't sell yourself, nobody else will. So you have to be confident in yourself. Um, so how do you show employers at application stage your resilience in skills? Um, well, first of all, obviously, there's your CV. Um, you know, making sure that it's selling all your best bits and you must remember that um, you need to adapt it for every job you apply for. Um, your CV should never be static, it should change um, and one way you can do that is maybe looking at the job description <clears throat> and mirroring certain words that they use within the job description in there. Um, if you're using an application form, my uh, suggestion is maybe write the answers on Word or on paper first and then copy it into the application form. So maybe somebody else can reread it and check that it's okay for grammar, but also that you're not underselling yourself. Um, and look at the job description and break down the essential and desirable elements and think about examples from your working life and private life where you can uh, show that you have those uh, elements that the employer's looking for. And also get a friend to check it before sending. Um, I don't know whether any of you have um, 
a LinkedIn profile or not. Um, but it's definitely worth looking at doing one if you haven't. Um, if you have got one, make sure it's up to date um, and make sure that it's looking professional. Um, I've chose, uh, shown you a couple CVs, uh, examples that um, I would use uh, for uh, clients. Um, they're both kind of showing the same attributes, but in slightly different ways. Um, CVs in the UK should be no more than two pages long. Um, it, there's a personal summary, but so that's your bit to sell yourself um, and also highlighting all your skills um, and all your job history as well. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see that. Okay, so um, I'm going to come back to you guys. Okay, so do you guys have any questions at all? Uh, so what's the advantage of having a LinkedIn profile? Okay, so, um, so I think a lot of employers do use LinkedIn. Um, I think it's worth doing. Make sure it's up to date. Make sure you've got a nice a photo. I can do a whole presentation on LinkedIn pres uh, profiles if you want a bit later. Um, it's a really good way of a uh, keeping track of your employment history. Um, I'm staggered by the number of people coming to me to have their CV done and they cannot remember where they were three years ago, what they're working. So that's it. for you, it's quite a good way that way. Um, for uh, finding work, um, employers use it. I know um, recruitment agencies use it also to find employees. Um, so if it's up to date and selling yourself, it's a really good way of um, find, well, looking for work without even looking for work. Um, also, I know that when you get to interview or you know stage, a lot of employers will go on LinkedIn to see, um, you know, uh, what you know what your background is, uh, that kind of thing. So they kind of they do do a bit of social media stalking. So if you are on there, just make sure your Facebook and everything else is locked down. So because if you're a party animal, they'll probably find that on uh, Google as well. So just make sure they're all locked down. Um, also, it's a good way of um, staying in contact with employers uh, who may, may move on that you want a reference from, but you don't necessarily want on Facebook as a friend because you want to keep work and home separate. Um, it's also a good way. So if you looked on my LinkedIn profile, um, I have recommendations from people that I used to work with on there. Um, so again, that boosts my profile, makes me look better to employers. Um, and also for me, as, as a professional, I link in with other careers, uh, uh, organisations and career um, social media, and I learn from what's on there. I learn from, uh, you know, what's most up to date, uh, new ways of doing things. Um, you know, I, if I see interesting jobs I'll share with other people so other people will see jobs coming up if I see there's a careers fair I'll post that on there so people so there's lots of reasons why I think LinkedIn is um, a good tool so um, where can you look for volunteering opportunities loads of places so there's a website called doit.org um, and I'll send that to uh, Michal uh, soon so if anybody wants it he can pass it on um and um you can go into like local charities um so for example if you were to go on the samaritans website or nspcc they actually have volunteering options uh, for opportunities on their websites so you can get involved in um you can you know even if you your children play football at weekends or um you know or any kind of sport they're normally looking for volunteers so whether it's organizing a tournament um, uh, they're, they're always looking for treasurers and chairs for these uh, these organizations as well so again you're kind of getting management experience within the UK um, I spoke to someone this morning um, who um, has just done a qualification of bookkeeping wants to get into bookkeeping I said well go and do the accounts for a, a local a charity or, or a local sports team because they're always looking for people. And although it's unpaid, it's still relevant work. You've still got to get them signed off. You've got to do the banking. It's got to be accurate. So, um, yeah, so definitely, you know, there's lots of different places. So some of it's online, some of it's doing a bit of your own sort of uh, delving and, look and researching into. Okay. 
Well, okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to do a LinkedIn um, presentation a bit later on if you would like me to. Um, any other questions? No, okay, oh, hang on. Okay, super. So my biggest thing I'd say as a careers advisor, um, sell yourself. Tell everybody how wonderful you are on your, on your, um, your CV. The National Career Service would be really happy to help you with your CV. So if you want that second pair of eyes on a CV, then come and see us. We'd be more than happy to help. Okay. Um, and, you know, just get involved, volunteer. Um, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> That's great. It was brilliant, Melania. I think uh, you provided lots of you know, informative um, data. Inform it was lots of information, so I do believe uh, that people will find that useful. And uh, just to um, just to men you've mentioned about that um, platform when you can um, uh, you can tell people about your uh, experience and interests. Also, the other th it's uh, just for those people who perhaps uh, they have never 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 had a chance to use it. More or less, it's like a Facebook, but it's professional, and then you are more aware about opportunities, uh, web uh, webinar webinars or training courses uh, and um, so it's everything is related to, to, to job uh, development and you build the connections with professionals and they hear what you do what you've done what would you like to do and that's uh, it's much easier to connect and uh, achieve your goals uh, more or less and um, what that was quite interesting that you said that these days uh, there's no job for life and um, some, some people they are quite reluctant to accept it and uh, because they've got that uh, expectation that it's enough to attend one school gain one qualification and you are good uh, but uh, obviously this uh, this market these days the, the job market it's more more um, violent more aggressive and you need to adjust yourself every two three years and learn new things so never stop learning uh, 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 always um, there's a space for improvement and learn new things in the end of the day it's just expand your skills and connections with other people whether it's a, a language or uh, digital skills uh, or uh, interpersonal skills and um, I hope you enjoy so far and um, if the, the feedback from the community will be good, and I do hope so. Uh, we would like to ask you uh, to spend two minutes and use a chat. Uh, you can use the general chat, or um, ch you can chat to Jasna, Ginny, or myself. And I've got a question. What would you like to see in the future? What kind of web webinars would you like to see? Uh, as an example, we could, uh, we could talk about discrimination and your rights. We could talk about self-employment. So if you would like to be a, uh, your own boss, perhaps you've got an idea, but you don't know how to, um, how to be self-employed, how to open the, a business, uh, perhaps you would like to uh, hear how to do that step by step. Uh, we could talk about housing, if you've got some housing issues. Uh, um, employment rights, uh, well-being and, and stress. Um, what, what was outstanding from uh, today's webinar, uh, we were talking about the, the need of selling ourselves. So you need to present yourself. And um, um, it was mentioned that uh, from people from other countries, uh, the, they don't necessarily uh, know how to do that. Or perhaps they are not aware that they're supposed to do it because of, uh, in their home countries, a different way of um, summarizing in the job uh, experience. Uh, so what about those people who are quite shy, who don't believe in themselves, um, who, uh, whose uh, self-esteem is quite low? Uh, so perhaps we should talk about those issues, about their well-being in, in general and how to cope with stress. Um, so there, there's a lot of organizations that provide those techniques and, uh, and methods uh, to, uh, to help you to improve and um, be more brave, more confident um, and outstanding. Um, 
we also mentioned about digital skills and only because of the basic knowledge of digital skills uh, we were able to connect uh, today and to use computer but I know we know um, that it's not always the case there are always some people uh, who perhaps struggle with the computers with the mobile phones with programs uh, with new platforms and apps it's lots of them uh, so perhaps we should talk about how we should uh, how to use the technology these days what it's been uh, what kind of benefits you can you can have from platforms and applications available including learning the language or developing your uh, skills uh, especially the lockdown um, has shown that uh, these days we have to adjust the, the way we learn and the way we work these days and we are using uh, internet and there's lots of different trainings available these days um, whether it's free or you need to pay um, and but uh, uh, all of those um, educational institutions they offer uh, lots of different courses so there's always way to um, to, to reach them uh, and uh, we are open for for your suggestions so please you chat and uh, suggest some ideas what what, what we, we could uh, talk about uh, next time um, and for those who are not with us uh, at the moment and uh, they will catch up with the uh, video later on um, please find an email address it's going to be attached to the description of this video and um, feel more than welcome to to email me and suggest um, your ideas what would you like to see in the future and also if you don't mind um, uh, and, and as I've mentioned you don't need to use the general one but we would like to ask you about your ethnicity um, it, it's only because we support BAME communities black Asian and ethnic minority groups and we would like to know more or less what what um, mm, how big the interest is and from which groups uh, what people are interested in what uh, sectors uh, so if you don't mind uh, everything it's uh, confidential so we won't uh, share that uh, answers with other people um, it's just for just for our use and it will help us to adjust the future webinars uh, uh, to your needs and um, taking the advantage of uh, uh, talking about self-employment and um, the job uh, in general, uh, I would like to just mention in, in two sentences about new possibility or, or an opportunity for people who has got um, who, who have got some uh, experience in care. Uh, so basically, if you used to work for the uh, care house, uh, or you you are carrying um, elderly uh, parents or a disabled person, whatever, and especially especially if there's a drive in yourself and you would like to develop the skills, or but not or perhaps you you work for uh, the agency and you del deliver that service already, but for some reason you are not happy uh, with uh, the contract that you have or the uh, work environment right now whatever or perhaps you would like to be your own boss um, there's a project called micro provider uh, and um, it's um, we are more happy to more than happy to 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 help you to become your own boss so the Somerset micro provider network is a group of uh, community-based providers that um, provide personal flexible uh, support and care to local people uh, and those people have got more choice uh, so you can offer uh, your experience and the service that you are ready to uh, happy to provide and uh, there are always people in need who perhaps would like to have that more um, informal connection uh, with person and have a um, more personal approach and and then they might be happy to employ you and by doing that you will gain new skills um, and and, uh, and you can set up your own uh, rules rather than uh, join uh, some agency and work for them um, so uh, if you would like to find out more about micro provider project and you've got the drive in yourself uh, please do, don't hesitate uh, to contact us okay then um, I'm not sure whether uh, any of you have any other questions uh, if so uh, please that that's the time uh, or if you'd like to share any other ideas or comments um, or ask uh, Melanie or uh, Joanna, um, you are more than welcome to do that. I have a suggestion. 
sorry. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jivan. Hi, my name is Jivan. I am. Um, I'm a independent sexual violence advisor, so I support victims of sexual violence. Um, reading the chat, um, I also agree with a lot of people are talking about stress, mental health, ideas of loneliness and isolation. I feel like that's something that needs to be touched on. I know that within my work, a lot of victims have been suffering um, because of the trauma they've experienced, but also because of the whole lockdown situation, this uneasy kind of reintegration back into the community, knowing what the rules are and things. Um, so I feel like that will be a really useful session for people to help people help our communities reintegrate back into what this no new normal life is going to be. I feel there's a lot of anxiety around that at the moment. Um, so I think that will be really useful if we could do that. I'm sure some people would want that too. Yeah. Thank Definitely. you so much for today. It's been really useful. Thank you. Definitely, Jivan. I must say that just a few weeks ago, uh, the Bridgewater Together group um, uh, organized something similar. We, we have them to, uh, to, to, to provide that kind of uh, digital event when people were sharing their concerns and challenges about the, the, the new uh, world after the lockdown and how to rebuild the, the, the community, how to find ourselves in that new environment. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I do, do agree, we, we, sh we could do that more often with uh, new content and a um, completely different approach. Thank mm, you. That's great, thank you. Okay then, uh, if you don't have nothing else to add, I would like to thank you all guys for, for the time. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Melanie and uh, Joanna for, for your contribution. Uh, I, I found it uh, really useful. And um, also I would like to thank uh, Somerset Community Foundation uh, for enabling us to provide this webinar today. Um, and uh, once again, uh, all details gonna be added uh, to the description of the video. So if you will, um, if you will decide to share any ideas for the future webinars, uh, please make sure that you will do that. In the meantime, I would like to wish you a great day. Uh, the, the weekend is approaching, so <laughs> not much left. Uh, and uh, all the best, guys. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michal. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.